Hi and welcome to my playhouse and today we're gonna be having a look at a Raspberry Pi 4. My buddy Jim uh, thought that I might find this interesting. I usually um, look at way bigger things than tiny little Raspberry Pis, uh, but he just came by, he had been to the post office, post office uh, and he came and he put this box in my face and said, oh you gotta see this. Um, but he's shy himself, so he's sitting right here laughing at me, but he don't want to be on camera himself, but we get to see his toys. So uh, yeah, let's unbox this Raspberry Pi, which apparently has a Danish keyboard, which might be important. We have the box and it's Mark Jim. <laughs> he has cheated, he has started on this. <laughs> What's his address again? That wasn't too bright. <laughs> okay, Raspberry Pi 400 PC7. Oh, it's a box and a box, so we get to unbox and box. That's nice. It's red. Raspberry Pi 400 PC set. Uh, oh, there's a lot of connections here. GPIO header. Micro SD card slot, two micro HDMI, USB C, and well, strom means power in uh, English. <laughs> two USB three connections and a USB two connection and a gigabit Ethernet. Well, what do you know? How do we open? Oh, it's a sliding box. Oh, I, I've been on the roof mounting solar panels. I have washed my fingers, but this is too white for my dirty hands. So, um, yeah, it's that's that's nice. It's just the keyboard, but with all the connections, and it already has the SD card installed. 16 gigabyte sand disk. Nice. So let's see what else is in the box. We have a micro SD converter, well, from micro SD to SD converter. Then we have a Raspberry Pi USB C power plug. That's pretty normal. Well, it has a nice Raspberry Pi logo on it, so it's definitely customized. But it's a USB C and can I see this? Yeah, it's 5.1 volts, 3 amp, and that equals 15.3 watts. Wonder if that device uses that much. And Jim shakes his head, so no. <laughs> then we have, oh, a mouse. Ah, Raspberry Pi mouse. What was the price of this, Jim? Uh, Danish crowns, 849 at Raspberry Pi DK. Okay, 849 Danish kroners yes. equals 140 dollars. 140 ish. Jim is a very feminine man, so these red colors. <laughs> <laughs> it must be the Danish version, um, red and white. The raspberries are normally red. <laughs> <laughs> And we have an HDMI to micro HDMI cable in white. And we have the beginner's guide in Danish. Oh, with pictures. That? You should be able to follow that one more. <laughs> I know you don't do the RCFM very often, but... It, it looks complicated. <laughs> So, okay, so you can do way more stuff with this. This is this is a rabbit hole. That's why I'm into the server stuff because uh, you can't do both. This this will take up all your time messing around with this, which might be something that you like to do, but then you don't have time for anything else. There are so many cool things that you can probably do here and connect it to external stuff and control. Well, this looks like a simple setup where you control an LED from the Raspberry Pi. 
Yeah, I did that way back in a, on a Commodore 64. It is like a Commodore, right? As you have the whole computer. And yeah, it, it actually is. <laughs> like the Commodore or the Spectrum yeah. set 81 ish. So I think we might need uh, to connect this to the monitor to, uh, to see if it works. In my cute little setup here, I have one of these tiny little screens which are meant for uh, filming. It's a filming monitor, but it's great for this sort of tiny work. So uh, we have popped the HDMI cable in, in, in the monitor and we have the micro SD, that's not, micro HDMI. Yeah, micro HDMI. Oh, wonder if there's a one and two there. We're just gonna pop it in one of them. Uh, that feels a little bit, uh, that, that could break really easily. And we have the mouse. Uh, that needs to go in Probably the USB 2 connection will be accurate there. And then we need a power plug. And the cable isn't too long, so I uh, had a bit of a trouble there. But let's see if that isn't long enough. Um, it goes kind of in the middle. Uh, which one is that? That's that one. There, power on. We need to turn on the monitor as well. Field monitor. And it finds something. And it's already booting. Resizing root file system reboot five seconds. Hmm. I guess the five seconds has, has come and gone because now it's it's about to be ready again. Oh that that is kind of cute. And the mouse is working. That is really a micro setup. And I am told that it is actually also pretty powerful. Uh, I think we need to go next here. Uh, luckily it stopped talking Danish. Uh, so probably only the manual is in Danish. Or oh, we can set that oh we can set that up right away here. So country. We will select the right country. I see that we are able to afterwards select the language to use Denmark language English time zone Copenhagen uh, I guess that will have to do <laughs> use English language yeah I don't know use English keyboard no probably we're gonna mess this up password so let's put in something that Jim don't know about there we are top secret password next Oh, set up screen. So we're gonna set up the screen because there is black all around here. So it would be nice if it used the whole thing. Searching network. Oh, so we can jump on the neighbor's network. Does it have 4G, 5G? Next. And I'll put that in. Okay, network connected. Software setup. Go, go gadget. This is very much just next, next, finish ish. This is almost Microsoft Windows. We start by downloading the updates. So all the computing is in the keyboard here. And it, the keyboard is really thin. Like it's not very thick. And yeah, this is the Danish version. We have these A, O, O. -O and um, yeah, nobody else has those. Well, maybe Norwegian or Swedish, I forget. Yeah, it's still downloading, so I can't mess with it. What? It is power on. I think we should see how much power this uses. It completed. That didn't take that long. I was doing other stuff. Setup complete. Mm, restart. Yeah, sure. Just like Windows. I just dug up the specs on this and it's, um, it's a quad core ARM processor, 64 bits, 1.8 gigahertz. It has four gigabyte of DDR4 RAM 3200 megahertz, uh, both bands of Wi-Fi, 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz, Bluetooth 5, gigabit ethernet, and a lot of good stuff. It can do 8, 265, 4K in 60 frames per second decoding. Ah, oh, whoa, so it's, a, it's a quite a TV box. It uses 5 volts. Yeah, we are up and running. Have a desktop here. I am not very good at this, but I guess we could try and 
Oh, and it figured out the screen. It now goes all the way to the borders. So that's nice. Yeah, this is a tiny little Linux PC and it has everything. It even comes with LibreOffice installed and a few tiny little games. Uh, Minecraft for Pi, Bomb, Internet, VNC Viewer. Okay, let's check how much power this uses. Let's uh, shut it down. Let's see, does that log out? Shut down, check. So up here we have the connector. So we're just gonna unplug that for a few seconds. Put in this power meter and plug that back in. There. And we'll go turn the device on and see how much power it uses. So normally it powers on when you connect power to it. So we just shut it down. We want to test the power button is up here. F10 also have the power sign. And then there is two signs down here. So there is two goes. Either it's Fn and power or it's Raspberry Pi and power or none of them. Hmm. So let's try ever so. Oh, so you just need to uh, press it longer. Nice. I'm in a slight problem here. My power meter says that it doesn't use any wattage whatsoever. So, uh, ah, ah, that can't be totally accurate. Okay, I moved it down to the floor because um, this tester, well, it has a ground connection which I don't have up there. So right now we are seeing the power uses. Actually, it's using 2.3 watts. So 2.3 watts, that's not a lot of power. It's not running the monitor because the monitor has its own battery here. So it's, it's only the Raspberry keyboard <laughs> that is being powered here. I am gonna stress it just a little bit. Uh, I found this totally random YouTube channel with this idiot showing you all kind of weird stuff. In this one he has a Ryobi brushless chainsaw. Who, who, who watches stuff like that? So um, there's a little loudspeaker in the monitor here. There. And I can... Um, oh yeah, he's... Really irritating through here, uh, but I can see the power meter over here. And right now it's running the video and it's using 3. Point, well, 3.5 4 watts to do that. With a little luck, we might be able to run this from a power bank. This is a power by Lenovo Intel. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, let's try and shut it down and uh, see if we can power it from there. It auto powers, so I'm gonna. Uh, and there it is it's turning on and we're up and running that's pretty neat the monitor really also runs from USB I have a tiny cable here that takes the 5 volt and converts it up to 12 volt which the monitor uses so let's try and power the monitor from the same power bank here oh that goes that way there and we'll disconnect the battery which will of course turn the monitor off and let's power that from there and turn that on and really what's not powered right now is the camera because I'm running out of battery power on my camera so uh, yeah <laughs> now we are running everything off of that Lenovo power bank so a um, portable PC. So a Lenovo Intel power bank can power an ARM processor with Raspberry Pi. No problem whatsoever. <laughs> awesome. We have almost reinvented the, the portable PC. I think we're gonna call this Porty Pi. Everything here is running off the power bank. So it's a kind of, it's a bit on, on handy with all the cables, but other than that, it, it's actually running. And with the two micro HDMI ports, you should be able to run two 4K monitors. This one does not run 4K. I think it runs normal HD. I forget. Yeah, this one can do an HD signal. So that was a quick look at the Raspberry Pi 400 with the Danish keyboard and the Danish manual and the red and white mouse. It's it, I, I think it must be dangies because our flag is red and white. It must be, it must be what they're thinking of there. So uh, 
yeah i hope you enjoyed this i'll be sure to leave some link in the description so you can go and check this out maybe see the specs i only read up some of it to you i am told that this might be able to run vmware if you want to have your own little vmware server in, in in a tiny thing like this we didn't ever really see the back of it it kind of looks like that and it's not very big it's tiny PC. So thank you very much for watching my videos. Do subscribe to my channel so that you can see me again and have a really nice day. Bye bye.